Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Kathleen Hemrick and I'm a mental health therapist. So today, I'll put my glasses on so I can see myself. Today I want to talk about authenticity versus acceptance and how the two, when we're growing up, often can collide instead of them being mutual or integrated. So we start off as babies that are really cute. I don't think there's any ugly babies out there. And we cry, we scream, we wet our pants, we laugh. We do all these emotions, right? And if we have a healthy parent or caretaker, they're going to be like, oh, cute baby. Like they're going to show the baby. They're going to pick up the baby, right? And be like, rock the baby, burp the baby. And what's the baby going to feel? Obviously, they can't verbalize it. Baby's going to feel loved. Baby's going to feel accepted. Baby's going to feel like I can feel all these emotions and mom and or dad, preferably both, accept me exactly as I am. Great. This is great. Doesn't mean that going forward, you're not going to have trauma. Of course, we can all have trauma at various stages of our life. But what it does mean is you have a really good foundation of your parents or caretakers reflecting back to you that you are okay just being you. You don't have to be better. You don't have to be prettier. You don't have to be smarter. You don't have to be thinner, blah, 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 blah. I'll get to that later. All right, so let's do the opposite. Um, and before I go, obviously, that is an integration of the authentic and being accepted for who you are because you can authentically be yourself and still be accepted, which is ideally what we all want. So what if we get the opposite for various reasons? Um, mom and dad are fighting, mom's depressed, dad's working all the time, um, mom or dad read a book that if you let the baby cry alone, thanks Dr. Spock, that, uh, that they'll be okay, that they'll learn boundaries. Our basic needs as children, as infants rather even, is to have mirrored for us back our caretakers love and acceptance and nurturing and happy smile or oh concerned smile when we don't get that back what we end up doing is we get back the negative of that parent which makes us feel not accepted which means that we can't be ourselves so let me give you an example um, and let's, let's raise it from infant to two-year-old, right? Terrible two. So terrible twos, um, Johnny is running around and he like throwing something and whatever. He's being, he's being two. And mom is whatever. She's like, okay, he's two. I accept it. Or she's had a kid before and she's a mature, healthy mom or dad. Doesn't matter. Whoever is caring for us at that moment which hopefully is an adult. And so he or she or they say, okay, Johnny, you know, I can see you're running around and I can see you're upset or, you know, and since you can't talk to them, what do you do? You go up to them and you sit with them and you go, okay, okay, you're mad, you're mad. And, and, rah, rah, and they're like, and you're like, yes, I know, I know. And you sit with that child whether they're two, four, six, ten, whatever. And obviously as they get older, you would be more verbal. But the point is, you don't try to stop the child's anger. I'm not saying if a child is screaming in a supermarket or in a place where people are gonna be like, please make the baby stop. But remember, we learn at home, so how we behave at home, how we're taught at home reflects in public. So you sit with that child, take him for a walk, maybe have him draw a picture depending on what age they are. And what does that tell the child? It is okay to be angry. It's not okay to try to hurt somebody, right? We go, no, no hitting, but it's okay for them to express their anger. Great. So what are they able to be? Themselves. They can get angry. They can cry if they want to. They can do whatever they want and be happy if they want to. And again, that is the parent or caretaker mirroring back to them that I love you, I accept you for who you are. Let's take an opposite scenario where um, a child is not accepted. Okay, 
So let's, let's raise the age, even though I think obviously with an infant not being picked up, just them crying themselves to sleep is a clear message of I don't matter, okay? I think it's very clear. But let's take it to, we did an infant, we did two-year-old, let's take it to a five-year-old, okay? And he comes home and he's crying and his dad or his mom are there and they're like, what's going on? Why are you crying? What's wrong? And he's like, blah, 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 hit me. And um, his dad says, or his mom says, well, what did you do? And he's like, I cried. And they're like, you don't cry. You don't cry when somebody hits you. You hit back. Do you understand me? I'm not raising a little, little baby here. You stand up and you fight back. And what's the message he's given? One, I can't cry. Two, apparently I'm weak if I don't fight back. Three, I'm not accepted. And four, they're not comforting me. So what am I supposed to do with that, that, um, pain, the crying, the hurt from mean Stevie hitting me. I am supposed to push it down. And when you push things down, what happens? Depression, or you push down that anger, what happens? That anger eventually will come back like a little rubber ducky later in your life. And you'll be like, I don't know why I got so pissed off at the grocery store clerk. Well, because you were taught to push down your anger. So let's say that night, um, that five-year-old goes to bed and he has a dream and he's crying and um, he wakes up the next day parent um, sees that he's wet the bed and obviously there's a couple ways to go here but the most obvious way would be you know if they were healthy parents they'd be like hey what's going on what happened and the night before or the day before they would be like we're really sorry that so-and-so hit you that's not nice. People shouldn't hit people. And if you want, we can talk to your teacher or the principal because this is not okay. And so what does that child hear? They hear, I'm okay. It's okay to feel the way I did. What happened to me was not okay. My parents love and support me. They accept me. They are going to be there for me. So those would have been the great parents and say those great parents show up and they're like, oh, did you have a bad dream? Yes, I had another bad dream. Whatever the five-year-old says, okay? Um, about the mean, mean Stevie. Okay, that would be great because the parent sits there and says, I understand this is scary and that it really hurt your feelings. And sometimes when we get scared in our dreams, sometimes we will release things, right? And it's okay, it's not a big deal. We're gonna put it in the laundry and how about we go do something fun today? if they didn't have school, or even if they had school, how about we not go to school today? You know, just take a break. I know that can happen all the time, but validating that child's feelings. All right, so let's say the mean parents come back, the ones that, that totally negated their child's feelings, told them that they have to fight back and be strong and no crying, and they didn't raise a baby and blah, 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 blah. I, w I was gonna say something meaner, but I don't like that word. So the parent comes, comes over, wakes up child, child wakes up, and they're wet, right? Because they peed in their pants and now it's on the bed sheets and they start yelling. Um, they yell, you know, what's wrong with you? You're five years old, you're not supposed to wet your bed anymore. You know, um, mean things, you know, I don't wanna say them, but just mean things. Like, but basically, what is that child hearing? You're bad. You can't express your feelings, which right then would, be, would have been fear. You can't, I don't accept you. You have to be somebody else. You have to be this tough version of yourself. So that's what I mean when we go into, if we can't um, integrate that authentic self with being accepted and loved, we start to split apart and we develop a second self. So can you imagine what that five-year-old second self might become? He might become um, very tough, might even become a bully. So he's not bully because he's told he's got to stand up and fight for himself. He will probably grow up with a lot of repressed anger that comes out in unexpected ways. And then again, let's say he acts out that anger because he's pushing it down, but one day he loses it. 
the parents reiterate, you're a bad son, what's wrong with you? We didn't teach you to like, you know, hit other people. And he's like, oh my God, you, you taught me to stand up for myself and you didn't accept, accept me as I am. And now I have to be this tough version of myself and now I don't even know who the original version of myself is because I have tried so hard to build up this thick skin. So I could go on. There are so many more examples. Um, another, I'll just share another one, the opposite of pushing down anger, rage, what have you. Let's say that uh, me. I learned to cope when I was little by pushing down my anger, my sadness, my grief, because I noticed that um, unintentionally, and this is not about blaming anyone. It's about explaining, okay? So we're not blaming, we're explaining. That's what I always say. So my authentic self was a very sensitive child, one that liked to just play and kind of be by herself and wanted to know that her mom was there and um, that she felt really safe with her mom there. And so probably up until, I don't know, I'm pretty sure I felt fairly safe up until maybe three or four because then some things started to happen that made me feel like my mom wasn't there for me. And there were moments. There were moments when my mom, I feel, should have stood up for me, but she didn't because that's not what she was taught. So what message did I get? I don't matter. I'm not strong. My mom is not strong. Nobody's going to come to save me. Nobody's going to come to rescue me. And so I either have to play the victim or I have to play the, the cold, I don't care right? Because that's my protection. Either like, I'm going to cry and you're full sorry for me. Literally, this is what I did. Or I would play that kind of, I always throw in astrology and that Scorpio was like, I don't effing care, you know? And so growing up, I kind of swung between these feelings of, you know, feeling like somebody was bullying me and that I was powerless to it, or feeling like I had to be a B-I-T-C-H because that's the only way I could stand up to people. So I would very often attract either people that would bully me just verbally, you know, have that domination over me and I would back down or I would come out fighting. And basically neither of those versions were of myself. But what I learned early on from my mom is that we really can't be honest. We can't be powerful in just who we are. We either have to play the victim or we have to stand up and be a B-I-T-C-H. And so now that I'm a therapist, it took me a long time to realize this, but my authentic self that I'm working on is to be as honest as I can, but kind about it because I really don't believe um, Honesty is worth it if you're going to be an asshole about it, right? So being kind as possible about what you want to express with being honest, being your authentic selves, um, recognizing that so many of us that come in with anxiety, with depression, with anger management, I'm sorry, I make fun of that, is because we were taught to push that part of ourselves down. Anger in and of itself is not unhealthy. If you come up to me and you're in my face, you're in my space, and I say, get back, get back, that is a healthy anger. Now, if I'm at a restaurant and the waitress or waiter rather says, sorry, we're out of the salmon, and I'm like, what? I came here just for the salmon. Are you kidding me? You didn't, there's no sign that, that says you don't have salmon. And my friend is like, oh my God, Kathleen, what is going on with you? Right? And, and the wait staff is, wait person rather. Yeah, wait person is like, I'm sorry. And I'm probably triggering them because I'm making them feel like bad, right? And if they're, if they're, version of themselves is I've got to please, I've got to please, especially if you're in the service industry, they're like, they're like, she's a crazy bitch or worse. They're thinking, God, you know, why didn't I tell them before? Why didn't I write it on the chalkboard? Whatever. But obviously the issue is mine and I'm acting out because I wasn't allowed to express anger growing up. Take that frown off your face or it might be permanent. Oh, so annoying. Turn that frown upside down. Shut up. Maybe I just don't want to smile. I actually had, when I was uh, a young woman in my 20s in New York City, 
I would have um, men be like, you know, you'd be a lot prettier if you smiled. And I'd be like, you know, you'd be a lot cooler if you shut up. <laughs> I know, because I was like, why do I have to smile? Like, maybe I have this inner happiness going on, people. But I digress. But this is a huge subject that I really want you to think about and come back to. Authenticity versus, and it shouldn't have to be versus, acceptance. How can we start to be our authentic selves and practice acceptance? The bottom line is going to be, if we weren't given that acceptance for being who we really are growing up, when we learn to push who we are down, we have to start to focus on accepting ourselves. I know, you're like, Kathleen, why can't I just go out with somebody and find an amazing person and they accept me and love me as I am? Because you have to do it first. If you make acceptance contingent on something exterior, outward, or another person, they can take it away. And the message is, you're looking for that acceptance from somebody else instead of having it already existing in yourself and being able to give it to that person and attract a person that has acceptance of themselves. That's why I talk a lot about inner parenting, inner child work, or reparenting, because we literally have to go back into our trauma and Please, don't say that you have no trauma. We all have some trauma, okay? Whether you recognize it as a huge one or not. It is not the trauma that actually happens to us because that actually ends. It is our continual reaction to not healing that trauma, to not having that trauma heard by somebody. The other thing that, that Gabor Mate points out is when you have something happen to you, who do you tell? And most people say, no one. And so what message do you get? You get a message that you cannot talk about your pain. You can't talk about how hurt or angry you are because either somebody told you don't talk about it or nobody was there for you or you were scared because when you did try to talk about it, you were blamed or dismissed. So that's the other thing is talking about your feelings. When my clients are like, well, how am I supposed to change this? I mean, I know that I have anger issues and I'm like, yep, awareness. They're like, what? I'm like, being aware that you're angry and parenting yourself the way you weren't when you're younger. Being angry is okay. It's how we choose to express that anger. So if you're like, oh my God, I'm ready to go off on this person. See if you can just sit there and be like, what? what's going on? I'm ready to rage, right? That's different from anger. That rage that you feel like you're, you're um, about to explode, you know, or people, a lot of people, when they go into a rage, they don't even remember, right, what they did. I have clients that said, I don't remember doing that and I'm so sorry. And I'm like, that is because you disconnected from yourself because anger when you were growing up was not accepted. Right? So in order to express it, you have to kind of blank out. I know, it's kind of crazy. I could go on and on, but please comment below if you resonate with this, if you feel like you can relate, if you have anything that you would share, you know, please only share what you feel comfortable with. If you have examples of anything in your life where you feel like you've had to push it down, right? This is why we have so much anxiety why we have anger management, why kids act out, right? Why we're depressed or repressed rather. I do hope this helped. If this helped, please hit the like button. It really helps my channel grow. This will be my 90th video and I'm very excited um, about that because I started this channel almost a, a year ago. Yeah, a month ago. That would be amazing. 90 videos in a month. That would be a workaholic, which I'm not. And please subscribe if you feel like you want to and or share the video with somebody. And I hope that I continue to help you because that is why I'm here. And it's not the only reason why I'm here. Let me tell you why. Because growing up, I never felt that my true authentic self was accepted. And so guess how I learned to find acceptance? I was a people pleaser. I was a helper. I would help my mom not be depressed. I would try to fix people. I would clean. I mean, literally, like anything I felt I could do to make people be in a better mood. So now that's a tricky line as a therapist because I have some challenges where I have to accept that people are only gonna change if they really want to and I can hold that space for them 
or I can decide I can't help them because it's actually coming back to hurt me and I can refer them out. That's a whole nother subject though. All right. Namaste. Thank you as always for being here. Take care. Bye.